streamer to enter the galactic community, something like that, if they want that to happen. So the absence that we haven't seen anything when there's so many possibilities means nothing. Frank, do any of these two questions, either of these two questions, uh, whether there's intelligent life elsewhere in the universe or whether the human beings will ultimately colonize the cosmos, do these reflect back in any way on the anthropic principle? I think that um, what science will tell us is that um, Francisco has already given the biological answer, which I think is correct, that uh, we are alone in the cosmos. But I think that um, life will actually expand out from this planet um, because all life uh, and robots are a form of life. They're very primitive now, but ultimately they will be the form of life that will spread out uh, into the cosmos. Bruce has already described uh, what will, will happen. And um, ultimately, these forms of life uh, will just uh, take over the universe. Leon, can there be non-carbon, non-biological intelligence? Uh, yes, they can. Well, they can be. Uh, I can't evaluate the probability, but there are, uh, there are nuclear forces and nuclei which are very dense, and there are neutron stars which are vast accumulations of very, very dense nuclear matter. Processes in these, in these neutron stars take place a million times faster or more than processes mm -hmm. in our chemical uh, mm -hmm. uh, civilization or chemi chemical experience. And so these uh, enormously fast uh, reactions could possibly generate enough complexity to begin the evolution of intelligent life, perhaps. And uh, it would be very interesting. It would be hard to communicate because one second of our time would be, you know, many, many, many generations of their time. So while we were discussing something, they would have the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. <laughs> well, some of these uh, systems uh, send out signals. I mean, pulsars is uh, very well. Sure. What's yeah, pulsar? I used to work on pulsar radiation, and everyone was always wondering if, in fact, they were artificial beacons. They're but, very, very powerful but, and caused by the spin of these. Right, by, by the, of these furiously compacted stars. But the important point that Leon brings out is that there are systems in which natural evolution could work and would work a million times faster than this creepy old biological world of ours, in which case the probabilities of producing intelligence are much higher on in a given time just because the rates are higher. So uh, we ought to realize how ignorant we are before we close out probabilities. I want to pick up on ignorance because yes. that's what we ought to start <laughs> with is recognizing how little we understand compared to all there is to understand. Yeah. And we've been fancy, you know, futzing around this discussion. You've been having a miraculous earth-centered life. That's the b <laughs> biblical view of, of the origin of life. Not at all. Not it, at all. No, no, but, miracles. It's, uh, no miracles. No miracles. I insist, no, I, we, no miracles, let me finish. Let me not finish. impossible. What you are arguing is that it's only happened here. It has happened nowhere else. Both of you are. Yes. If that's not a religious view no. about the uh, life, it, it bears extreme similarity. Don't, no. don't reject that's that for a minute. You're talking about, well, maybe we can have other kinds of thinking things going on, evolving. And you're all right in some sense. The point is that what this is really is an argument about God. This is about meaning, about the, the whole enchilada. Yeah. And my point of view is that we are so primitive as, as recognizing thinking machines ourselves yeah. that there's not, you know, we shouldn't expect to come up with strong answers on that. But the fact that we can conceive of some universal principle, of some universal yeah. connectedness yes. and some meaning to it, is itself a reflection yeah. whether you come at it religiously or you come yeah. at it as a nuclear physicist or you come at it as a <laughs> geologist of the same sense that there must be something here that's larger than us in our primitive scratchings. You see, the problem I have, Bruce, is that I know how to multiply. And I know how to multiply in probabilities. This has nothing to do with miracles, has nothing to do with religious views. It has to do with the example that I gave you. What is the probability that two human beings born from separate parents will be genetically identical? Zero. It's just multiplying in probabilities. That does not mean recognizing that not two individuals from different parents are identical. That does not imply any religious view. It makes no reference to religion. It's just simply a matter of probabilities. Yeah, but, but, but I find it fascinating that if some people interpret what you say, which is clearly non-religious, non-miraculous, interpret it in a sense that this brings up the question of religion, that reflects back on us as human beings, as, 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 as beings that, that, that crave a search for meaning, mm. where, wherever it comes oh. from. I but, crave that. Do you crave that? Absolutely. But you see, meaning is, <laughs> Robert, meaning is something that we impose on that. Okay. And, and that's wonderful. And that's it's it's that's no what, less real. That's what life that's is. It's no less real. Absolutely. I, I don't think science is all what there is to the universe. I think uh, 
you know, yeah. art, aesthetics, ethics, all sorts of other things are superimposed upon them, and that's where I get the meaning. Yeah, and, and, and there's nothing miraculous about that, that but nothing. it is based upon human consciousness Absolutely. and human self-awareness, which searches for this meaning. So uh, project forward. Uh, how, do you, how do you see this developing? Well, certainly Bruce is right that we are searching for meaning, but this is the first inning of this game, and we shouldn't... I, I, I too, have a dislike of arguments that close out probabilities and possibilities. Um, all the same, we ought to realize that it's a big universe out there, and it's been here a long time, and our knowledge of even the rates of processes is so primitive that it's hard to make these arguments that close out pos possibilities. So, in fact, I do think, say, a, a billion years from now, I think the, the galaxy is going to be packed, but probably with us, because we're, you know, we're ugly, we're mean, we're ornery, but we're damned hard to kill. A hundred years from now, will Bruce or his descendants be able to have detected alien life? Right, 100 years, that's your timeline. Yes, and I'll money your money back in 100 years. Good, I'm wrong. you got it. You'll be here and we'll uh, yep. t t test you. Bruce? I don't think we can answer that in a, in a, in a well-defined analytical way because this may take 1,000 years. There is no way of understanding the right, but negative. It, uh, but, but therefore, my answer is... What's your guess on 100? I sure hope so. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and let me ask you again. If we're around for a million years, what's your guess on that? Definitely. Nine? Okay, right. so that's your timeline. Right. Frank? We will not detect intelligent life any time in the future because they simply are not there to be detected. And the reason they're not there is, we can see, there are no probes which have arrived here. Francisco? Will we have detected life a hundred years from now? Yes, because life is not so rare in the universe, considering the size of the universe. We will find that there are our technologies advancing, advancing so fast we'll be able to find life there. We will not be communicating with them because they are not intelligent. Yeah. Will we detect life? Absolutely yes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> As you might have guessed, opinions are divided. Does intelligent alien life exist? Will humans colonize the cosmos? Did the universe expect conscious beings to emerge? Some say these killer questions are related. Our purpose, here and throughout the Closer to Truth series, is to spotlight fundamental issues of existence, dissect them, enjoy them, and link them if we can. We're after human uniqueness, purpose, destiny. We won't stop asking these questions and hope to nail them before we go. Do you think obsession like this gets us any closer to truth? I'm Robert Kuhn.